and welcome to this week's youth video. It is June, what is it? The 12th? No, the 13th for you. Um, and uh, we are in our series once again called I've Been Meaning to Ask. And this week we are looking at several passages. I'm going to specifically focus in on the passage of Job 2, 11 through 13. And so I'm just going to get right into it. Um, I think most of us know some of Job's story. So uh, Job is known to be a man who had ex extreme suffering and pain. And, um, you know, at, just on one day, he lost his children, they died. He had um, all these crazy things happen and all of his livestock got destroyed. He um, lost his home and he had this severe like illness kind of hit him all in one day and job is kind of the antithesis of pain and suffering and so after all these things happen um i'm not going to do too much of the background of job one and two um i encourage you to go read that um but job basically his wife comes to him and says like why don't you just curse god and die because it's that bad and Job is basically like no I'm not gonna do that um, he says um, you know basically ends up saying like the Lord gives and the Lord takes away blessed be the name of the Lord but what we're gonna talk today is not about Job and his pain and suffering what we're gonna talk today is about Job's friends a little bit and so in Job 2 verses 11 through 13 this is what happens after all this crazy stuff goes down with Job. It says, when Job's three friends, Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuite, and Zophar the Namathite, heard about all the troubles that had come upon him, they set out from their homes and met together by agreement to go and sympathize with him and comfort him. When they saw him from a distance, they could hardly recognize him. They began to weep aloud and they tore their robes and sprinkled dust on their heads. Then they sat on the ground with him for seven days and seven nights. No one said a word to him because they saw how great his suffering was. Okay, so, um, Job has just experienced these crazy things. Death, um, you know, loss of everything in his life. And so his friends get together and they kind of basically say like, we're gonna go, let's go together and be there for Job. So, you know, they set out and I just, I think it's so beautiful how when they see him and they see how he's changed from this pain, they start to weep because they are just feeling it so deeply in their hearts. And um, they tear their robes and sprinkle dust on their heads. And this was a custom that they would do um, in biblical times where they basically put on sackcloth um, uh, and this might be before they started to do the sackcloth, but they would tear their clothes to show like I am I'm in pain I'm, I'm like rending my clothes. This is so severe. This is so painful um, They would also like I said about sackcloth They'd put that on because it was like in, like a hard itchy fabric and that would help them to remind them their suffering and they would put ashes on their head to show, you know, the, the death and the pain. And it would be a constant reminder, a physical reminder of what's going on. It says they sat on the ground with him for seven days and seven nights. Can you imagine if your friend experiences pain and you go and you sit, sit on the ground with them for seven days and seven nights? No one said a word to him because they saw how great his suffering was. If you continue to read in Job, um, you will see that soon, as soon as they start to open their mouths, it's, it's almost as if, you know, you wish they had just kind of kept silent because the more they say, the more advice they try to give Job, the, the worse it gets. In our ser sermon series, I've been meaning to ask, this week's theme is, what do you need? And we're looking at how Job's friends have come to meet his needs. Have you ever had a friend in pain? Have you ever had a friend maybe lose a loved one or um, experience job loss or have financial hardships 
or have a breakup or um, you know their pet died there's all kinds of ways that we experience pain in this life nowadays you know uh, our customs are a little different from what Job's friends do we don't usually rip our clothes or put sackcloth on and put ashes on our heads um, usually we bring casseroles right so I think everybody knows at this point I had two surgeries this year this year was a weird year uh, pandemic year and then also just crazy things um, for many individuals, myself included. Um, a lot of physical pain uh, for months and months leading up to my initial surgery, physical pain after, physical pain with my second surgery, and then I strained a muscle after that. It's just been really difficult. And throughout this year, there have been all kinds of ways that we have been supported, that we have been loved. Um, and that the church has really, really blessed us and our friends and family have really blessed us. Uh, we had, for my initial surgery, um, a group of women from church, women of God, who were just such beautiful, beautiful creatures who brought the most delicious food um, and took care of our family in that way for an extended amount of time. Paulette Baker brought over a whole big bag of chips and food and things that you know it's so crazy how God works because it's all of the things that if I went to the store to get food for my family those are the things I would have picked out these women that brought food Libby Blake and Betsy Coral and countless others if I didn't say your name you were included um, just such good food and it just was such an amazing gift to our family um, when James lost his job his parents took him to Sam's Club and brought back just so much food. They filled our freezer with food for the kids and for our family. God has not stopped meeting our needs through the church family and through our own family. And these are such amazing ways that we have been shown support this year in our pain and in our need. Um, the question for the week once again is what do you need? And to ask this question, we make ourselves vulnerable. Um, you know, what someone may need in a moment of pain may be just for us to sit with them and say nothing. For some of us, that's hard, right? Some of us don't know how to just sit still. Some of us don't know how to just be quiet <laughs> even. Some of us, you know, may be asked when we say, what do you need? We're putting ourselves out there and we're leaving it open. And we're saying, how can I be of service to you? How can I help you? And it may be something, we may hear something that we, we may not want to hear. If I were to ask my son, uh, what do you need? He may say, I want to go to Cedar Point and I need you to ride rides with me. And I would be taking a major risk doing that. And it's something I would not want to do. Um, you know, if, if, if I'm busy working or doing something and my daughter says, mommy, will you play with me? What does she need in that moment? And how is that a sacrifice? It's the little things every day that add up that show people that we love them, isn't it? Um, and especially when someone is going through pain and trauma and experiences that they can't think straight. They have all these decisions to make. They don't know what to do. A friend to be supportive to them in this time when everything's crazy, when they literally do not look the same because of the pain in their lives, just like Job. His friends didn't even recognize him and they wept with him. Do we weep with people when they're in pain? Do we feel their pain? God feels our pain when we're in pain. He weeps with us. When Lazarus was dead, even though we knew, Jesus knew that he was gonna raise him from the dead, he came and when he saw the suffering, when he saw his friend dead, he wept. God feels our pain. I read in my devotion this week that kindness is love and work clothes. And I just loved that. I'm doing this Alpha devotion um, and it's a read through the Bible series. And so I wanted to give some credit there. But kindness is love and work clothes. I want you to think of friends around you, people in your family, in your life. How can we sacrifice by saying, what do you need? Ultimately, Jesus loved us, loved his friends. The Bible says that 
you know, there's no greater love than this, that Jesus would lay his life down for his friends. And ultimately asking, what do you need? Is us sacrificing, taking that risk, making ourselves vulnerable to be there for others. I wanna encourage you to find ways when others are in need and in pain around us, that we can put on those work clothes of kindness and that we can make ourselves vulnerable enough to ask truly, what do you need? And I hope and pray that when you do that, you will experience how Jesus sacrificed himself for us and it will draw you closer to him and it will draw you closer to your friends and you can know that you are doing God's work because I can testify for sure that so many people did God's work to us and our family and we are incredibly grateful and those things never leave. It is lasting, it is eternal. So thanks again for watching this video. I hope you guys have a great week.